welcome. I'm so happy to be with you here today on our Fast and Fun Projects with Noreen. I am Noreen Smith. I am the Product Development Creative Manager here at Creative Memories. And it's my absolute pleasure every Wednesday to be with you for, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, 5 p.m. Central Time. And we are live on the Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group and on the Creative Memories YouTube channel. So let's see who we've got here. Oh, we've got Gina saying hello from Colorado. Mary's joining us from Eastern Washington. And it looks like I'm getting some other thumbs up, but I haven't seen any other comments yet. So drop a line, tell us where you are joining us from today. And uh, just a reminder, if you're on Facebook, I won't be able to see your name. It just shows up as Facebook user. So feel free to say, hi, it's Noreen from Calgary. All right, there we go. So there's exactly what I was mentioning. There's hi from Jean in North Dakota. There's Margarita from Puerto Rico, Judy in Boston, Janice in Pennsylvania. Hi from Kayleen, Ruby in Colorado. There's Colleen as well joining us. It's always great to see all of the familiar names hopping on. I love it. Uh, like I said, it's the highlight of my week, you know, kind of planning and thinking about what I want to share with you and then actually spending some time with you today uh, together. So that's great. Someone from Virginia, Minnesota. That's Teresa from Minnesota. Linda from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Crafting with JJ saying she's excited to be here live from Georgia. And oh, here's our Aussies coming in. Somebody joining us from Melbourne, uh, Denver. Oh, we're running in fast and furious now. So Washington, Australia, New Mexico, Saskatoon. Maureen's here from Saskatoon. And Alice from uh, Abbotsford, a couple of my fellow Canucks. So they are joining me as well. Um, I'm seeing a comment that her video is freezing. So just a reminder, if you have sound troubles or um, video troubles, try to refresh your device that you're looking on. So either kind of pull down from the top, uh, swipe, if you know what I mean, uh, if you're on a tablet or your phone, or if you're on a computer, you look for your little, your little wheel or your little arrow to do a refresh, okay? All right, got lots more gals joining us, so that is awesome. Well, today we are going to be playing uh, with a recipe template, and this this was an appropriate um, meme that was on the Creative Memories Facebook page the other day. Scrapbooking is like cooking or baking. You can follow the instructions to a T, or you can spice it up however you'd like. You are the creative chef. And I think that is so appropriate and it fits with my own personal philosophy of scrapbooking. There's no right way, no wrong way. You can follow a recipe, you know, you can follow instructions, guidelines, step-by-step -step outline, exactly if you want to get, you know, the same results, just like a recipe, or you can add and subtract based, based on your own personal tastes. So although we've got lots and lots of different things that you can create exactly as is, we've also got lots of leeway to create it however you want. And Virtual Crop this past weekend's perfect example of that. So there was four sketches, four sample layouts, and countless interpretations. So you all took those recipes, the sketch, for example, and you made the modifications. You added a little extra spice. You'd left out an ingredient that you didn't like. All of those kinds of things are the same things that we do in scrapbooking as we do in cooking or baking. And you're gonna see that with our recipe templates, it's exactly the same kind of thing, all right? So I've got actually, I think it's six or seven tips for you for using recipe templates. And then we're going to actually kind of uh, look at five specific ways you can use the recipe template that I'm going to be working with today. So let's just see, we've got a whole bunch more gals who have hopped on. Somebody from Ontario, Iowa's here, Maine, Wendy's joining us from Windy, Pennsylvania, I think that's PA, uh, Maine, uh, Oklahoma, it, we're all here. We're, I, I've, 
I would imagine that almost all of the 50 states are represented in our, our time together. I know a good chunk of the Canadian provinces and probably the Australian um, different uh, territories and provinces there as well. So I'm so, so happy to see everybody. Okay, so let me flip you over. And you probably realized, I'm kind of giving something away here, but you probably realized that at the end of our time together each Wednesday, if I just give you kind of a general, okay, join me next week for da 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 da. If I just kind of tell you generally what we're going to be doing, it's usually because there's something new coming out and I can't actually give you all of the list of ingredients. So that was actually one of the comments that I just wanted to kind of address. Uh, somebody was saying, well, you know, how, if we're using the new products, how do you expect us to have them ready to scrap with you? And I don't. So sometimes we scrap together and I can give you the exact ingredients, just like the recipe, ahead of time so that you can have them all ready to go and we can follow along together. But sometimes, especially just after a launch, I'm often sharing ideas with you so that if you were on the fence about purchasing something, maybe that gives you some ideas or you can kind of think about what you want to do with the products you've already ordered. And then, of course, remember, you can always come back here, rewatch or look at the images, the stills, and, um, you know, get inspired to use your products when they arrive. So we kind of do both, right? Sometimes we scrap along together with specific ingredients. Sometimes I'm just kind of doing a, a demonstration and some ideas. So that is what we're doing today. And if you haven't already seen the beautiful new On the Farm collection, you are in for a treat. Now this just launched on Monday on the farm beautiful designer paper pack, stickers, mat cards, of course, these fun layered borders. So in this case, the little hay bales are already kind of pre popped up with foam squares for you. And a gorgeous, gorgeous, extra large layered frame embellishment. And again, if you joined us during the um, virtual crop this past weekend, you saw my example of one of the layouts using that beautiful big extra large frame embellishment. So all of these products, oh, and of course I can't forget the new tools. We've got the farm and, sorry, barn and fence, border maker cartridge and the tractor punch. So all of these tools, of course, you can create fast and fun layouts. And you know, like things like this, they, they make it so, so quick for you to create these beautiful layouts that look again, like you've been working for hours on them, but you, you know, you just stick this down and it's one and done. It's ready for you. So all of these products are fantastic for that, but you might be thinking, well, how is a recipe template a fast and fun way to get an, uh, a layout done because you have to trace and you have to cut and how is that fast? How is that fun? So that's what I'm really wanting to talk to you about today is how you can take this uh, beautiful recipe template, the barn recipe template, and change it up so that you can have, you know, you can create your layouts quickly and easily. I'm sorry, it looks like, it sounds like we're getting lots of freezing. I'm not getting any messages that I'm freezing. So I'm sorry, I apologize. It Again, try to refresh and if it doesn't, remember that you can always watch the replay as soon as we're finished. So my apologies if we're having technical difficulties. I'm not getting any messages saying that, um, that it's on my end. Fingers crossed everybody can see and hear okay. If not, I hope you can join me and watch at the end. All right, so back to our recipe template again. We are going to change it up. You do not have to create the layout exactly as shown. You do not have to create all of these parts and pieces to this particular recipe template. You can spice it up, you can add, you can subtract. So let me just kind of quickly clear some of this away so that we've got less distractions. Of course, 
you know, the, the papers, I could, I could eat those papers. They are so delicious. Fantastic, fantastic. But let's clear this away so that we can play with the barn recipe template. There we go, that's a little bit better. And let's have a look at it. Okay, so here we go. I've got it on a piece of uh, hot fudge cardstock just so you can really, really see it. So let's start with the tips that I have for you. Um, and like I said, I think I have seven of them. So, and these tips are kind of general. They're gonna work for no matter which template you have, um, which template you're working with, okay? So, the first one is to trace the template onto the back of your insert, your title page insert, okay? And I know that I've got mine traced here in pencil, so until you get pretty close to it, you can't really see it. But I like to do this for two reasons. So first, I can use it as a bit of a kind of a template holder or a place holder so that when I cut out a piece, I can just place it right on that spot on my, my page. And that way, uh, I can always see where it's going. Okay, so that's the first reason I like to, to trace it. I use it as a placeholder to match the pieces that I've cut with where they go in the template. All right, the second reason though that I like to trace it is that I can actually go and mark on my template the sizes of things that I can easily cut out. So for example, I can go ahead and measure my kind of my photo spots here with a ruler and just sort of say, okay, that's three and a half by four and a half. And then I can write that down right here on my template so that the next time I go to use it, if I just want to cut out my photo, I don't have to measure or trace or anything like that. Okay. So it's an easier way to kind of do the things, the easy shapes again and again and again. Okay, so that's the first thing. Trace the template onto the back of your title page. Now the second thing, of course, is you're gonna need a few tools. I think that the recipe templates are very beginner friendly because you only need some basic tools. I've already got my ruler out here, a pencil, of course, and I actually do like to use a white pencil if, um, if I'm tracing onto a dark paper. So this is just, you know, a, a Crayola pencil crayon. And then I always like to have my little white gum or white art eraser. I don't know why it's not coming out of its little case here. But the Stettler brand um, is my preferred one. I've been using those since art school. And then you can use any scissors. I prefer the micro tips just because they give a little bit of a cleaner cut. And then a couple of other things you'll want, repositionable adhesive for sure. And we'll talk about that in a second. And if you are buying your first, um, your first recipe template, you have the option to buy the little clips. So those can come in really handy. If you have them, you, you don't need to buy another set, you can use them again. And really what they are for is to hold your template, you know, to the paper. I personally prefer to use repositionable adhesive, okay? All right, so those are the basic tools you need. So if again, if you're a beginner, this is a really easy way to create that show-stopping layout without a lot of tools. These are very basic tools you're gonna to be using. So that's number two. The third thing that I wanna remind you of, again, basic tip, you can use it for anything. This particular recipe template is very much a scene. You know, you've got the sun and the clouds in the barn, but you still can rotate it. And that's a great way to use some of the other elements. So I could actually just rotate this and use the kind of the placement of my photos, the photo spots in different ways. Okay. So Definitely an easy way to multiply what you are, you know, the, the kind of looks that you're getting. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm, I know that there's been, seems to be a lot of technical difficulties. 
Uh, I promise you, I'm not getting any messages on my end. Everything's been reset. So I'm so, so sorry if you're having, you know, the freezing on your end. It looks like a lot of people are. So I, again, I apologize. I can't stop now to, to do a reset. Hang tight and you'll definitely be able to rewatch the, the replay as soon as we finish up. So I'm very, very sorry. Uh, again, looks like things are okay on my end, but it could, it very well could be me and I'm just not getting a message. So my apologies. But anyways, whatever recipe template you're looking at, don't forget to, you know, flip it over, do a reverse, do the rotates, see how, you know, see what elements you can actually use when you flip and rotate your template. All right, number four. These are great to use with scraps, but I want to caution you uh, just as a kind of a reminder that if you are using a pattern that has some direction to it, you'll want to make sure that you can get the shapes you need with the pattern going in the same direction. Okay, so I know this is a chicken pattern, but for example, if you wanted to, um, you know, have it for this particular shape, you'd want to, you know, try and make sure that the pattern is oriented in the right direction as opposed to just trying to, you know, sort of fit it into the spot because then your pattern is going to be upside down or backwards or on an angle. So scraps are great, but make sure you have a look and see what direction the pattern is going before you trace and cut out. It would be a shame to have, you know, some of the pattern going one way and then in another block it's going a different way. So scraps are great, but make sure they're going in the same direction. All right, number five. If you have a shape, something like these sun rays, and if you want to extend them to the edge of your paper, uh, you'll want to get a ruler. Again, a ruler is an easy basic tool. And when you're tracing, make sure that you trace the outer edge of the template or place the the shape that you're tracing so that the edge of the template goes out. And then that way, I'll just do one here as an example. So that way I'm going to just trace that and then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to trace it and extend it right off the page. So having a ruler and extending right off the page is a great thing to do uh, to get more of a sort of a scenic look. If you like the look of having the frame around it, no worries, just trace that entire shape as is and it will make it look like there's kind of a frame behind your shapes, okay? All right, um, number six. So say you've got a shape traced. I had a sample here a minute ago for you. Sh say you've got your, your shapes traced and maybe it's the little cloud. And sometimes even if you're really careful about cutting, you've got these rough edges. I always have a little emery board uh, just you know, hanging out in with my pens, for example. And I'm not gonna distress the edges, but if you just kind of go as if you're filing your nails just around it, it's gonna take off any of those little rough spots that you have Maybe if you cut uh, off the page, for example, and you've got kind of a jagged edge or something. So keep an emery board close by. That's a great way to smooth out any of the shapes that you cut with scissors. All right. And then number seven, and this is just kind of, again, a, a reminder that for some shapes, you're going to have the inside shape. So I'm looking at the roof line, for example, and if I trace on the inside, it's obviously going to be smaller. I could also trace around the outside edge. So be aware that some shapes will have inside edges, some will have outside edges. Okay, so those are my seven tips. I am going to go ahead and I'll put them into the um, Facebook description and the YouTube description. So don't worry about if you missed any of those. I will definitely go back and put them right in the description for you, okay? But let's go ahead and play with this particular recipe template now. 
And I've got about five other little things that I'm going to show you for when I'm using a template like this. So I'm just going to use a piece of beige cardstock, okay? And we're going to create a layout. We're not going to trace all of these little shapes. We are going to look for the big shapes. So if, if this is a barn, I can see that the outline of the barn is a nice big shape. Big shapes are easier and faster to trace and then to cut. So that's a great thing for a beginner or if you want to create a beautiful page really quickly. So for example, instead of cutting all of these little shapes from some red paper to make a red barn, I went ahead and cut the big shape. So I'll put this down first so that you can see it. Okay, so I went ahead and cut, traced and cut the big shape. It took me all of about three or four minutes. I can actually cut the large straight edges with my trimmer and then cut the angled pieces, you know, with my scissors. So look for the big shapes, trace those, cut those super fast. Now, obviously I need a roof. So that's where I went in and I cut a slightly diff or I cut it from a different paper. So just those two pieces there create the look of a barn. I didn't have to go in and cut every single one of these pieces. Next then, I thought, well, I could either cut all three of these photos let me grab the ones I cut, right? I can go and cut all three of these. And I believe, for example, these uh, ended up being, I think three and a quarter by four and three quarters. But I could also do that even more simply by just cutting one larger piece. Again, look for the big shapes. And then I can add my three photos on top. So instead of cutting out three photo mats, I can go ahead and cut out one big shape. And of course, these are so, so much fun. But sometimes if you just need to get, you know, a layout done quickly, you're just going to put your particular uh, photos there. And again, you could even just cut your photos to that outside shape, which I think is about three and a half. All right. So whatever you do, look for the big shapes. If and when you have time, you can always come back and add some of these more decorative elements. You can make it look like the corners around your frames are mitered, for example. Uh, or if you don't need you know, all of the photos, you can make these into little windows with the crisscrosses. So look for the big shapes. Those are always going to be faster and easier. All right? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify by using my custom cutting system. So I've got a circle here and I did go ahead and cut it out. Let me just grab my custom cutting system here. I've got it in my circle, but I pulled out my template sizer for my custom cutting system circle patterns. And basically I just kind of went around until I found the circle that matched the circle of the sun. And then that way, again, I can go ahead and write it right on my traced out template that this, to get this size of circle, I can use, I can either trace it and cut it. And that would be great, especially if I've got a small scrap piece that I want to use. But I could also go ahead and trace it from the inside track of the medium circle with my, oh, I think it's my red blade, sorry. I think it was my red blade. I pulled out my blue blade to show you, but so I can write that down, inside medium red blade. So that way I've got a really, really quick little sun that I can just kind of tuck in behind there, okay? So again, big shapes. Now you already saw the little cloud I made. But I wanted to point out that this is another great thing that you can do. So this is the cloud shape 
that's going to tuck in behind here. Okay. But when I cut it out, I actually cut more. So I traced out this side, then I flipped my template over and I used it to trace a little bit more of the cloud. So sometimes you actually can get full size shapes um, out of your templates. And I could use this cloud on so many different layouts. So I can actually kind of get it to do double duty by flipping it over, mirroring it, and cutting out my complete cloud. Then I don't have to, uh, again, trace it and cut just a portion of a cloud. I could actually make that into a full size cloud. Okay. So do, you can definitely duplicate or mirror image those shapes. All right, so that's that. And then really I could come along with my stickers. There's a, a fun little fence border here. I could put that in front. I could take some of this, I think. I think, again, I'm a city girl, not a farm girl. I think this is supposed to be corn growing. So I think it's probably meant to be a vertical border. But you know what, I could just go ahead and use it as a leafy green border. I could put that down there, put my fence across it, add a sticker. Let's see, something like, let's do farm sweet farm, okay? And I could either do it kind of up here at the top to make a really fun sort of focal title. I could group it over with the sun or the cloud. And you know, that's a really fast and easy layout to do because we only cut out the big shapes, the large outline of the barn, the big pattern or the big um, strip for our, the photos. And then really I only had to cut out one, two, three other pieces. So something like that is really fast and easy to, to recreate. You don't have to cut out every single piece. Okay, so that's got a couple of different, uh, you know, tips and hints of how I would use this particular recipe template. Let's talk about a couple of other things now. I mentioned that you could do some flipping and rotating. And again, you can obviously flip the template so that your sun could be on the different, on the opposite side. And that might work better for with your photos or it might work better, you know, if you've got a two page layout or something, and maybe you want, you know, the rolling hills over on this side and the barn over here. So whatever way you want, you can flip it. But I also talked about rotating it. Now, obviously a barn on its side is not the best look. <laughs> I can't imagine, you know, uh, using that kind of shape necessarily on its side. But I can look at the placement of these photos. For, for example, if I'm just, you know, I'm, I've got some photos, I'm not sure what I want to do. I could take one of my recipe templates and, um, you know, just turn it and make sure that I've got a variety of different, different sizes of photos, different orientations. So this one, for example, I could have my three photos up at the top here. And then I could have the two photos underneath, right? So that's really that particular orientation. Okay, and then I could put, again, my borders along there. I can also, if I have more landscape style photos, I can just turn it. And that is my, there we go. That's my, the way that the template would look if it was turned. Uh, obviously they can be at the bottom or they can be along the side. So really looking at some of the elements, some of the specific elements in your recipe template will help you create other layouts that don't look like a barn. Okay. So definitely make sure that you're taking your templates, whether it's the barn or other ones and flipping and rotating them. All right, just a couple more things, and then I'm going to end. I'm going to cut it a little bit short so that people can watch the, um, the replay. But the other thing is that you can duplicate some of your shapes. So one of the things that I noticed was that this uh, roof line shape is actually quite an interesting shape. So normally it would be up at the top like a roof, but I thought, what if I actually had 
two roof lines. I could create a different kind of, like maybe a bracket shape. Okay, and maybe that's going to be kind of like a border. Or, as I played around with it and joined them up at the bottom, it kind of became like a horseshoe shape. So see if there's some elements in the template that you could duplicate and then create a completely different layout from. The other thing to remember is to look at the paper that's left over after you cut. And what I mean by that is not your little scraps, but the big pieces. So I cut this roof line out of some wood grain paper. All right. So there's the wood grain paper. And there's the piece that I cut. So it actually left quite a, a unique shape. And I realized that this bottom part, I could cut it out and it could be a second barn. So just by cutting down the sides here, I would have another barn shape. I'm just going to fold them here for you so you get the idea. But just by making those two extra cuts in a piece that I had already cut, uh, I've got basically another, I don't see where my scissors went. I've got basically another paper ready to go. So there's my second barn. So definitely look at the leftover pieces of paper that are cut. After you cut your shapes, have a look at what's left over. See if you can duplicate any of those pieces. All right, so I've got enough for two barns here. So that's kind of fun. And like I said, the with the little um, cloud here. So all I did to create that cloud, because this is only a half a cloud, but all I did was take my pencil, trace my shape. I'm going kind of fast, so I'm not very careful. And then I didn't trace that inside shape. I'm just going to flip it over and then I'm going to kind of trace the same shape over here. So, and I'm just going to kind of take a couple of liberties. And then as I cut this out, I can, you know, change it up a little bit on one side so that it's a little bit different. And now I have a cloud shape that I can use on other layouts too. So I'm getting more mileage from my recipe template. I'm getting a lot of different looks from this barn recipe template, which really at first glance, you kind of think, well, that's really cute, but what else can I do with it? So flipping, rotating, mirroring, looking for the big shapes, using other elements inside the recipe template, duplicating things, all of those techniques and tips are things that you can do to really really stretch your products, in this case, the recipe template, and to really have that custom look. So just like the recipe, okay, just like your recipe for cooking, there's things that you can do to make it look exactly like the samples that you see on your title page, but you can add and subtract, you can spice it up, you can make it a little, little less spicy if you like. Uh, just according to suit your own personal taste. So when you see a recipe, recipe template, just again, think about all of the different possibilities. Not that all of your layouts that you make with this have to look exactly like that. Okay, so let me bring you back here. And again, my apologies. Um, I really, I really hope that you, uh, that you, some of you were able to hang in there with me. But the rest of you, again, if you're watching on replay, my apologies that you couldn't join me live. Um, I have a, I have, I use streaming software, and normally, if the connection is bad, I have a little uh, message that comes up in my, in my field of view that says, you know, internet connection poor. Uh, you know, it'll give me kind of warnings. I didn't see anything like that, but it sounds like so many of you were having problems. Uh, again, it could have been as my signal was going out, or it could have been a large provider that was distributing the signal. So you just never know. And again, my apologies. 
but I hope that you get a chance to watch the whole thing through on replay. And then I'd love to know what fun tips you have for using the recipe templates. Uh, you know, we've got several different ones. The mirrored ovals is a great one. The star flake, I think, is a favorite one. There's a journaling one with rays. There's lots of different styles there. And I would love to know or even see some examples of what you've done with the recipe templates. How have you made the recipes, the recipe templates, your own? How have you cooked up something different with the recipe templates? Okay, so again, we'd love to hear your tips. We'd love to see your examples. And I'm going to put it together just like I showed you, um, you know, with the large red barn piece of the little sun and the sideways corn border and the fence. So I'll put together my layout like that and I will definitely show you that so you can see kind of the final assembled layout. Okay, all right. I'm just scanning my list here. Oh, I will also go back and put those seven tips and uh, so that you can easily reference those. Okay, I think that's everything. And again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties and I'm sorry if it kind of threw me off a little bit in terms of continuity uh, and telling you all of the things that I wanted to share with you today. But again, hope that you can watch the replay. Hope that you can share your ideas and tips and yours, even your example layouts using the recipe templates. And if you haven't already ordered the barn template, I think it's a good one. It's not, it's not just for barns. You can get a lot of other uses out of that. It would be a really cute little house, a birdhouse, so many different things you can do with the, the structure of the building uh, itself. So I think it'll be fun. All right, so next week, next Wednesday, March 22nd, we are going to be doing some fast and fun borders and cards. So I hope you join me for that. And fingers crossed that we will have much smoother internet and we'll be able to, uh, you know, chat a little bit more and not be so distracted by, by all of the tech issues. All right, so I hope you have a great week. We will see you next week. I will definitely go back into comments and uh, look for any questions. Uh, that I can help you with. Okay. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you again.